Now various foundation and pilot equipments. Now we are going to look into some of these. Okay. So what we have seen till now is that what are the basic parts of the wire duct? What are the basic parts of our station? What are those things and what those things look like basically? Okay. So now we are going to see some pile arrangements. So this kind of pile arrangements are generally followed. So number of piles depends upon the your load which is coming, the vertical load, and it depends upon the geotechnical properties of the soil as well. Okay. So it decides the on the basis of that we decide whether it's a four pile group, it's a five pile group, or it's a six pile group, seven pile, eight pile, like that number of piles increases. Okay. So this is the plan. Okay, this is a crash barrier. You can see it's a 2500 dia We have a crash barrier, it's generally 250 on thick. Okay, and uh, here we have denoted the spans. In this side, is a 34 meter span, this side is a 37 meter span, and it's a cantilever pier. This one because it's eccentric from this from here. Okay, in here it can be two cases. Like the pier can be eccentric, but the you know that the the viaduct line is like is passing from here, or the viaduct line can be passing from here. Then it will be a cantilever pier. Okay, if the viaduct line is passing from here, then it will be uh, it will be concentric with the pier, but it will be eccentric with respect to the pile cap. Okay, so then we have to design the substructure accordingly. Okay, but if the line is passing from the center of the pile cap, then it will be a cantilever condition. Then we have to take the forces and everything correspondingly. Now here in the down in bottom, this is a balance cantilever which I showed in a few slides back. A similar kind of structure. So it's a basically a skew in this case. It's a skew the pile arrangement. There are a lot of piles. It's a huge load which is coming. Uh, the span is around 60 meters, and there's a huge load. So we are having around three, four, twelve piles here, and six piles here. Okay. Now, basic fundamentals for structural design, which we are going to discuss in very, very brief over here. Okay, the correct analysis of the structural behavior is very important to achieve the correct design. Most uh, in last like uh, 15 years, 20 years ago, when there were no softwares, the people used to do hand calculations and everything. It take it took a lot of time, you know. So today, what we have to do is because we have to submit everything quickly to the client, they can implement because we have a huge workforce waiting at the site to do the execution. So we have to prepare everything timely. Okay. So in order to prepare everything timely and correct, okay. And correct deliverables, correct in terms of the calculation and everything, we have to use softwares. Okay. It's a tool. Your concepts is a separate thing. Concepts should be crystal clear, no doubt, but you have to use the tools in order to prepare timely submissions. Okay. So analysis is either done manually or by using software such as uh, STAT, MELDAS, and uh, LUSAS, Sophistic, Robot. Now MIDAS is something is quite common like these days. Okay, design is done in accordance with the codes concerned. Codes, as I told you, it's mostly Indian railway standards in case of uh, like metro structures, and we take help of some IRC also IRC codes. Okay, obviously using the software, the job can be done very quickly and we can save a lot of time, but you need to understand the concepts as I told what is happening behind the scenes. You have to be aware. Okay, steps involved in analysis and design. First, we have to go with the selection of materials and their grades. Second, we have to define the properties. Third, we have to define the loads, which is very, very important part. The most important load is the dead load, self fate of the structure, you know, cell fate of the components coming over it, everything, the dead load, which is immovable load. Okay. Then it's the superimposed load. Superimposed dead load is basically a dead load, but it's superimposed on the dead load. So we call it as ideal. It's some is some part is fixed and some part is variable. Fixed part we cannot remove. Okay, it's fixed with the structure. As ideal variable is it can be increased in the future. So it's a variable part. The live load vehicular, the live load pedestrian. Pedestrian is generally taken with respect to the you know, codes. We is and with respect to the DBR, it's 500 kg per meter square. It's then vehicular load. It's the, it's the axle of the train which is coming. Okay, 
generally we take around 18, 17, 18 turn axle in case of metros. And seismic, seismic load is very important. You know, people create, do a lot of mistake in seismic. They don't understand what has to be done in seismic and uh, sometimes they go with the wrong design. So using IIS seismic code, we have to define the longitudinal transverse and vertical forces which seismic is creating on the structure, okay? The effects basically, these are the effects in long, because seismic can come in three directions. We have X, Y, Z, okay? So we can just analyze the structure and get what is the effect in these three directions. Okay, there are many methods defined in the codes and sometimes defined in the DBR also. Okay, the LWR long welded rail load, the braking and traction. Okay, LWR is related with temperature. Okay, the braking and traction. Now, when the train, you know, comes and it applies brakes. Okay, so it is a braking force, a horizontal force on the superstructure it is applying in the longitudinal direction. Okay, and similar is the traction. Traction is when it starts, it produces a traction force. Okay. Centrifugal force, most of you are, must be knowing this. Wind load, earth pressure static and earth pressure dynamic. Hydrostatic and hydrodynamic forces, like uh, in case of uh, piles inside the, you know, in, in near the river area or inside, if we, there's a well foundation inside uh, a river, for example, in Yamuna or in Narmada, okay, in any of the river. What we define there are, we have to study the hydrological parameters of that region. And we have to be prepared about the effect it is going to create on our structural design. Okay. Now vehicle collision load, as I told you, the crash barrier is provided for this vehicle collision load. Temperature rise and fall. Now there are two types of temperature. Uh, you must be aware some of you. Temperature rise and fall first is like atmospheric variation. Okay. So in summers, this, this area can get a maximum temperature of say 50 degrees Celsius. Okay. In winters, this area can get a minimum of like minus two. So we have to define for the structure, it's axial elongation and sectional variation. So for sectional variation is of temperature, it's a, there's a different different total standard in IRC6. This is called temperature gradient, positive and negative or positive and reverse, you can say, some people call it reverse gradient. Okay, construction loads. Construction load is very important and for the construction stages, we need to check for the foundation and for the superstructure also that what can the construction load effect create what effect can it create on our structure is it creating more bending moment shear force than the normal case than the service stage okay so we need to keep this in mind generally it doesn't govern but in case of like cantilever construction balance cantilever it can have huge effects okay surcharge so surcharge is uh, in case or in case of uh, earth pressure also you can just Take this surcharge. Okay, definition of boundary conditions, fixed, simply supported, prop cantilever, continuous beam conditions, partially released, okay, and release in particular directions with particular degree of freedom. You can just define it. You, you, know, you guys need to just keep this in mind. If a, a, a simple mistake in any of the boundary condition can create absurd results. Okay. So definition of analysis type, linear or non-linear analysis. In linear analysis, you must have read in like college stress versus strain graph is in a linear relationship and non-linear analysis is you know involved in in very very complicated structures okay so moving load analysis seismic analysis buckling analysis time history analysis rsi analysis okay then we have load combinations load combinations is uh, because we have created all the loads now what one load in presence of another load what effect is it creating so we need to look into the combinations okay ULS strength check SLS is stress check SLS crack with check SLS deflection check okay SLS is serviceability limit state and ULS is ultimate limit state so this is just if in case you don't know okay so our portal standards are right now based on uh, limit state theory previously it was working stress method Okay, running the analysis, we get the results at desired locations of the structure. First and foremost important thing is to observe the displacements of various nodes. Okay, any abnormality in the displacements indicated indicates an error in analysis. If uh, one displacement is coming like 2 mm, 3 mm and the same location, another node is going like 500 mm. So there, there's something definitely wrong in your, in your modeling. Okay, after getting the results, Bending moment, shear force, axial forces, and twisting or torsional moments, we 
move to the coder standard of design, which is accompanied by definition of clear cover, main bar dia, stirrups dia, etc. These things are further recorded in the form of a structural drawing. Okay, once you get everything, you just record it in the form of a structural drawing. And that structural drawing along with the design is going to be a deliverable. Okay, as I told in my previous slides. Remember the software we use is just a tool. And again and again, I'm repeating the same thing. It's the software is just a tool. In the end, the engineer has to know the background of the calculation entirely. What is happening? Like, obviously you will not know like, uh, what is the calculation, exact calculation the structure is doing, but you need to know the structural behavior, how the structure is going to behave in when this condition is, will arise. Okay. So it has to be like that. Okay, the superstructures analysis and design of the simply supports super superstructure supported bridges is generally done in Excel sheets only. Okay, now in case of uh, tools, as I told, like the Midas and uh, Stat, they perform the design also. But because as an engineer, we have to be sure we cross check the design in Excel. So mostly the Excel design is followed. Analysis, we obtain the results from the from the software. This is the general practice. Okay. Analysis and design of the simply supported bridges is generally done in Excel sheets only in case of RCC simply supported on bearing superstructures. We simply design it on the basis of bending moment and shear force coming off from the external forces using IRS concrete bridge code provisions. Okay, this, this code is available online. You can just go through it this one. Okay, the forces can be obtained from the line model or grillage model as per the requirement. There are different kinds of model. I can go into the very detail of in, in this webinar. But there is a line model and there is a grillage model and there are many other kinds of models which are followed by this, uh, which is which can be modeled in the inside a software to get the results. Okay. In case of PSC, simply supported superstructure, the calculation for losses performs a tedious part and very, very important role. Here the stress check is basically the governing criteria and the construction stage analysis is of prime importance in case of PSC. Okay. In case of continuous superstructures, the continuous in like in case of uh, there is no one span two span like continuous beam you must have studied in your bachelor's okay secondary forces come into role and have to be incorporated in the design and hence the use of software becomes unavoidable because if you are going to uh, in uh, your excel sheet if you are going to uh, design a continuous superstructure it is going to be a very very difficult job okay you can do it nothing is impossible you, are, you can do anything in your excel sheet or your manual calculation but as I told, it will be very time taking and very, very complex. Okay. The ULS bending moment shear force and the twisting moments decide the dimensions for the superstructure while the stress due to SLS bending moment decide the reinforcement of the number of tendons cables, which we use in the superstructure. Okay. So tendons in PSC, they are the most important thing. Actually, they are the only thing for which it is called a PSC. You must be aware of. Okay. Substructure and foundations analysis and design of the simple supportive bridge is generally done in exercise and only as I told earlier, the forces applied in the bearing give the P and M. So P and M is the load and the moment at the bottom of pier. So where whatever the load is coming, we calculate at the bottom of pier, which gets ultimately transferred to the piles in the pile group as per the rivet theory. Okay. You can Google it. This one, you know, it's very simple theory. It's, it's just mathematics, nothing else. Okay. And the final axial forces, compression and tension over the piles are finally used in the design combination, in the load combinations. The procedure for pile design is briefly described in the next slide. The things you need to keep in mind before starting pile design is the geotechnical and hydrological parameters influence the structural design. For geotech parameters, a test pile is performed at the desired borehole location to ascertain the soil layers and know what capacity can be achieved at that borehole. So geotech is the governing criteria for deciding the number of piles. Okay. Their pile length, everything. So geotech is the king here in substructures. Okay. The working load is estimated through calculation. Uh, we can working load of the pile means like whatever the uh, minimum required pile capacity, uh, what you need. Okay. From the, on the basis of the external forces. The required pile length is calculated using the geotech calculations on the C and five parameters obtained in the bold data of various soils recorded. Terminating the piles in the sandy layer is considered a good engineering practice. This is one point which I added here as for my you know, experience. You can re refer this book. If you uh, search on Google, this book is available in Google Scholar. You can read it online. 
J.E. Bowles. Okay. For pile foundation design, we generally use the following procedure. Estimate the overall loads on the bearings over the pipe pier cap. Now this load effect is transferred at the pier bottom as I told. The consolidated effect, the P, ML and MT. ML and MT is the longitudinal movement and the transverse movement. Okay. So longitudinal when I say, a longitudinal movement is in the direction of the traffic. Traffic is why I say it's a term of highway. But in case of metro also, it is the metro is called as traffic. Okay. This is a terminology symbol. ML and MT calculated at the pier bottom is estimated over the piles using derivative rate explained earlier using the external horizontal forces which the piles are resisting. So horizontal forces like centrifugal traction breaking, horizontal seismic, LWR and collision, we can find the design moment, you know, by multiplying this, this the, the horizontal forces which pile is coming, the uh, horizontal forces which is coming on the pile and we can multiply it by the depth of fixity. So depth of fixity calculation is given in I guess 2911. You can just write it down to I, this code reference and go through this. And corresponding load factors, if you multiply, we can get the bending moment because P we have already obtained. So P we got and M from here we have got. So we can design the structural section of the pile. Okay. What reinforcement is required in that pile section? The other method is to take the effect of the soil structure interaction into account. So this is one method which I told you in pile design. The other method is, you know, model the everything instead or might as every, everything you have to model the piles and the soil structural interaction, the springs you have to model. The springs is the model thing which we between the concrete surface and the soil. Okay. So that spring value calculation has to be done in, in accordance with the IS2911 code. The bending wind and shear force obtained from this are further used to design the pile structural section. Okay. Another thing which needs to be taken for consideration is scarring. Yeah, scarring and liquefaction, they are very, very important in case of pile design due to hydrological effect if there is a water nearby. So we have to take scarring effect. Okay. And the, when the pile is in case of a drain, anala. Okay. So we have to take the effect of scarring because uh, that soil above the scar level, because there is a scar level. Okay. For example, scar level is 100. The pile top level is say 108. So 108 minus 100, the 8 meters of pile is freestanding. It's basically not supported. The scarring has removed all the soil. We assume this. Actually, this is happening. The scarring has removed all the soil and there is no horizontal effect the soil is creating on the pile. Okay. So in case of scarring, the pile supports are ignored. In case of liquefaction, liquefaction is also a, 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 in case of seismic activity, the soil loses all its shear strength. So you can go through this liquefaction term in Google and you know study something about it. It's very interesting phenomena. It happens. So the soil is assumed to be a fluid during seismic activity and similarly to scarring, the pile side supports from the soil are ignored in the seismic cases. Okay. These are two cases generally govern the pile design because we get high forces on the top portion only. High forces in, in case of bending because pi is a compression member. Okay. In the compression member, when there is a more moment with less axial force, it is a governing case. Okay. So these are some cases. The left one, which you can see here, we have modeled a portal frame and this, the bottom is fixed. We have assumed to be fixed. So whatever the forces we calculate over here, the P, MX and MY, we can use that to distribute over the pile arrangement using the rivet theory. Okay. This is one method, method one. The other one is this one is the uh, we have modeled the springs also with the pile. Okay. And this, you know, you can see this portion without the springs. Okay. So this is, it can be a case of scarring. Okay. In normal case of scarring, we have uh, removed the springs over here because this is a free supporting. It's a free standing. So we can get maximum bending moment like in this portion and we can find depth of fixity directly from stat, you know, the point of contraflexure where it, where it is coming. We can just, Fine. And these are two spans. I think this here it is supported at one end and here is supported at one end. Okay. Like, and this pier is fixed. The fixed in, in case of this is monolithic in superstructure. It's, it's a kind of balance cantilever only, which I did a long time back. So this, this is the pile arrangement which we have created. The supports I have turned off because, because if I turn on the supports here, it will be like kind of messy and you will not be able to recognize how many piles are here and everything. So this is a skew basically with the alignment, if you see, okay. And skew arrangement is generally followed in when we encounter some utility below the ground or we have to design the piles in such a way 
okay that we have we can just we have to make then we make it skew you know deliberately sometimes so that uh, the arrangement is more uh, efficient or we can optimize the number of piles okay evolution in this structural engineering and career opportunities this this slide is very important you are like in start of your career and you see where i will be as a structural engineer in the coming years in the yesterday years when design was done using hand calculations was really time consuming process to today we have numerous tools which give very accurate analysis and design results okay this has changed the structural engineering vision to a very very larger extent today the tools like Maida Civil, Stat, Lusas have been proven very helpful to the engineers because uh, they, as I told in the previous slide, they reduce our time and they create a very, very, the very correct design basically. Okay, in the time to come, there will be a constant race for more, better, and faster design production and proof check process. So both, if for both of these things, you need concepts and tools. Be prepared. Okay. Due to rising number of rail and highway projects, there will be a huge requirement skilled engineers, as I said, which can get your design on an efficient and faster route. Okay, thank you, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed.